All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Please invite your friends, and if you are a Muslim, you are welcome to share us. Please just use a nice words and don't be rude, and you are more than welcome. Uh, today our topic is about the origin of the Christmas. You know, if we go to YouTube, we will find tens of thousands of videos made by Muslims attacking the Christmas. Endless numbers. Non stop. So, what is the problem with Muslims? You know, Christmas is for us. So, why you are talking too much about the Christmas and why you fear the Christmas? Why does religion have a fear from everything have to do with the Christianity? Anything have to do with the Christian belief, Muslims, they have a fear from it. Muslims celebrating Christmas. Love for Jesus and Mary. And for sure he is teaching you that if you do that, you are a kafir. You are not a Muslim. The origin of the Christmas. You know, I find it very funny that a Muslim, he speak about origin. And yet he don't tell us about the origin of Islam. And today, this is what we will discuss. The origin of the Christmas, or the origin of the, Christ, the Christmas, and the origin of Islam. Wish others a Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday Season. For sure, it's haram. If you watch the videos, you will see. You know? So anyway, we got the message. Zakir Naik, all those who claim to be scholars, they say it's haram, haram to wish Christian Merry Christmas. And actually, I saw an article which I find kind of funny. Uh, this is an article written by a Muslim. How to survive Christmas as a Muslim. His name is Ayman Ismail, and we have the article listed in the info. Here, Mr. Ayman, he is speaking about how he hide, how he flipped the TV fast so he don't see a Christmas tree or a Christmas song. How he avoid to go to the mall so he will not see Christmas, anything about Christmas. How much he suffer when he see this Christmas thing. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we caught Mr. Ayman saying it turned into a kind of a game when we watch TV. Uh, we strategically change the channel to avoid the Christmas commercial when we, I mean, you can read, right? So obviously these Muslims, the Muslims families are struggling from the Christmas. Christmas causing them big, big, big problem. So what is the fear? I mean, Christmas, everybody knows that in Christmas day, nobody go attack people. There's no head chopping and there's nobody screaming Allahu Akbar or Jesus Akbar, killing somebody. People they share gifts, share love. So what the problem with the Christmas? The problem Islam is a religion cannot stand, cannot exist with others because Islam will be demolished. So in order to have Islam only, we have to avoid anything else. Otherwise, Islam will not exist. Islam, when the Muslim they see the Christmas, how beautiful it is, and they see how ugly Islam is, I mean, why a Muslim he will stay as a, as, a, as a Muslim? So, in order to avoid the beauty, we close our eyes and we say what we have is better. This is a very funny article explaining to us the Islamic cult and the agenda that anything is a threat to Islam. Anything. This is how weak this cult is. This is how weak this cult. Now, my Skype is open if there is somebody he claimed to be a sheikh and he would like to call us and we will talk about the origin of the Christmas and the origin of Islam and we will see which one can stand to be something good. Which one, which one is pagan? Muslim, they say it's pagan. 
they say to you that Christmas, do you know that uh, uh, at one point people they used to celebrate the, the you know the 25th of December as the day of the sun? I mean, this is the most silly, funny argument. Because from your logic, I can beat you. First of all, it's called the Christmas, not Sunday. It doesn't matter what day it's going to happen. It's the 25th of December. It happens Sunday or not. That will not change the fact. That is, this, this is a day of a Christ. So when a Christian celebrates Christmas, they are celebrating Christ. They are not celebrating something pagan. So it's a very funny false argument to say that Christmas is a pagan day. And they say because one day there was somebody celebrating uh, the, you know, uh, in this day they celebrate the sun or they worship the sun. Actually, the Bible says it clearly that there is some people used to decorate a tree. And they believe in this tree have superpower after they decorate it so the enemy will fear them. And we can find that in Jeremiah chapter 10 and in Isaiah chapter 44. But this is about worshiping tree. So the Bible you know, forbids such a pagan behavior. So do Christians worship tree in Christmas Day? Do Christians worship uh, gifts in Christmas Day? Do we worship the light in Christmas Day? So what's wrong with the Christmas Day? The Christmas Day is a day of a Christ of birth. Secondly, the number of the day, uh, this is what the Western choose according to their calendar. However, the Eastern Christians, they have different date. Most, most of the time it's come as June, June 6, June 7. Sorry, uh, uh, Jan, sorry, January 6 or 7. Which means this is not have nothing to do with the Sunday or anything. This is about calendar. If you go right now and search when the Christmas will be, According to the Eastern calendar, you will see, as an example, the Russian, the Greek, they have different, uh, uh, different, day, different date. Why? Because the calendar, they take the Eastern calendar. So this is the calendar deciding when the day will be. It is not a pagan day, as they claim. Do we understand? Do we understand, people? So the date is not really important. The day, the day 25th is not important. And we are not being pagan and everybody know that. So it's a very silly argument from the Muhammadan. Now, as long as you are talking about being pagan, well, here we go, you're a prophet. He was celebrating the day of Ashura and Ashura is a day of pagan. And he decided to fast. And not only that, he said that the one who fast the day of Ashura Allah will forgive his past sin for a year to, to you know, uh, in the past year. This is your prophet. He is fasting the day of Ashura. Okay, what is the day of Ashura? Is that a pagan practice? The hadith in the front of you, and this is Aisha, and this is Sahih al-Bukhari says, read carefully, during the pre-Islamic period, of ignorance, the fact it's Islam, the, it brought, Islam who brought the ignorance, not the pre-Islamic. Anyway, the Quraysh used to observe the fasting of the day of Ashura, and the Prophet himself used to observe fasting on the, and that too. <laughs> Do you see it? So who is the one who is celebrating pagan day? What do you have to do with Ashura? Right? Why Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate Christmas? They're not Christian. Those aren't Christian. Who care? And by the way, celebrating Christmas is not what make you Christian or not. I mean, every day is a Christmas for, for us. Every day is a Christ day. Christ, he came already. So what is a what is a Christmas day is remembering his birth. And not only that, you see, that when Christ, the, the, the coming of a Christ, he made a new era for the whole universe. What is the day today? Somebody tell me what is the day today? Today is December 19, 2019, after Christ. So do you see what the point here? The point is not only that this is just, just, was, just was a day. It was a day for a new history for mankind. 
your computer, your watch, your 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 salary, your calendar, your your birth, your death, your everything is written by the date of the Lord. It's amazing. And this is what they hate, and this is why the Muslim not only they fight the Christmas Day, they fight the calendar of the Christian the Christians. Then somebody will come to you and will say that uh, uh, Santa Claus is not real, it's fake. Is it, you know, Santa Claus is a real person, you idiot. He's a real person. He was a very good guy. He gave from his own money to the poor. So the Christmas is very rich to the point it's making Islam in fear. I mean, this religion fear anything. This is how weak it is. Right? Now, before we continue, somebody he posted in the chat before we start that somebody is selling my book. My friend, in whatever form the people, they, they do that. I only sell my books in Amazon, amazon.com. If you find it anywhere else, especially if it's BDF file, it's not a book, not a physical book. That's mean this person is doing it illegally. Report immediately and the FBI will take care. And you can report to me and they will report, to, you know, already I got one, one person in, 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 in trouble for that. I hope soon he will be in jail. And there is somebody, he is posting uh, uh, in YouTube, uh, asking people for donation and PayPal. Please take a note. I don't have any place for donation except Patreon. So if you see somebody, first of all, I don't ask people, go and donate. I don't post texts around. I don't beg for it. Not me. If we have a big project we will do, then I will say, no problem. So if anyone is posting, if you have an account of PayPal, report him in PayPal immediately. You say, this guy is faking his ID and give me the ID. We will report it to the FBI and he will be in trouble, even if he's overseas. Because this is an ID theft, this is a crime, cyber crime, and he can go at least for five years in jail. In the top of that, you got your money refund. So if you got if you got your money given to somebody like that in PayPal, PayPal, whatever form, report immediately. This is the only place Christian Prince can receive donation. And I never text anyone says send me donation. Please take a note and help me to get those scammers to go to jail. And we will get them. Now, going back to the topic, we have some Muslims, like Mr. Truth Seeker, saying Islam is the truth and will never take a part of any adultery. My friend, Islam is about adultery. Did your prophet he kiss the stone? <clears throat> uh, 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 guys, look at this Muslim. He is saying that Islam will not take a part of any adultery. Do you kiss the stone, the black stone? Mr. Truth Seeker. Do you kiss a black stone? Yes or no? Christians, do you kiss a tree? Christians, do you kiss a tree? Do you worship a tree? We don't. It is you and your prophet who kisses stones. So you are the pagan. And if we go to the Bible, we will find in the book of Jeremiah, how the Bible teaches us that those who they are doing such a practice, pagan practice, they have nothing to do with God. And they are pagan. This is Jeremiah 10, 1, 5. And this is Isaiah 44, speaking about the same topic. Those pagans, they believe when they decorate the tree, they have a power. This is exactly what you do. You decorate the, the Kaaba. You dress the Kaaba and you think the Kaaba have a power. And not only that, you fabricate a story saying when an army came to destroy the Kaaba, Allah, he sent birds to protect the Kaaba. So you are the pagan. It is you who decorate a place of worship and you kiss the walls of it and you believe it is a powerful and you have a superstition that God house, this is God house. It's not us. We don't believe that our God is a Christmas tree. It is you. So when a Muhammad and he kiss a black tree, sorry, black, black, black stone. And if you, if you look at the, at the, <clears throat> At the, at the text of the Muslims, the second you say, why you kiss the black stone, there is no answer. I'm waiting for them. Who is, who is the Muslim when I tell me why you kiss the, the black, uh, black uh, uh, stone? Anyone? 
this in a stone is not equal to worship okay hold on you see guys he the, I, always I say always I say Muslims always they help us true seeker Mr. Abbas is the best to help us to expose Islam look what he said kissing a stone is not equal to worship worship it I kiss my kids surprise surprise okay look how stupid you are so you kiss a stone but you did not tell us why I understand why you kiss your kids I understand but still you did not answer because you are a coward you, you have no answer why you kiss the stone this is the question is the stone born of your wife like you did you go to the bed and you have some business with your wife with my respect to her and then at the end of six nine months your wife she gave birth to a stone so why you compare between this and that unless you are an idiot so I'm waiting for you to tell me why you kiss the black stone. Do you know why? Is the black stone the baby of your wife? And she did the breast suckling for it? They have no answer. They are pagan. Not only that, their prophet, he said that a black stone can erase your sin. I mean, have you ever heard that there is any Christian belief that the Christmas tree will erase your sin? No. Christmas tree is a tradition. Nothing more, nothing less. And look at them until now. I think this guy here is thinking how maybe my wife, she gave birth to that black stone, maybe. Hmm? So who is the Muslim want to tell us? Look what your prophet said. Not me. You're a prophet who adopt the day of Ashura because he's a pagan, and this is the day of the pagan, as you see. And this is Aisha reporting that, not me. That this is the day observed by the by, by the pagans. Black stone is a holy stone. Ho hold on, hold guys, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look what Abbas after squeezing his nose, what he came with. Black stone is a holy stone and a gift of Allah. So we kiss out of love and respect for it and do not know we Muslim do not have to kiss it. No, you have to kiss it. Isn't it your prophet? He says you have to follow my sunnah, which means whatever I do, you do. You're a prophet. He kisses. Secondly, you said the black stone is a gift of Allah. Okay. Well, Allah, he gave you a gift right now in your bathroom it's called the twilight seat and it's called the twilight paper because everything we have is a gift from Allah are you going to kiss your twilight seat because you can survive without your black stone but you cannot survive without your black without your twilight seat it's more important how this is can be a gift from Allah unless you are a pagan what kind of God you believe he is the only God he sent the stones as gifts Secondly, you just approved to me that you are a liar and your prophet is a liar. Why? Because isn't it your prophet? He said that this stone is a living stone is going to witness for you in the day of judgment. So why you are lying? If we go right now. If we go right now. And look what the prophet of Islam uh, see what he answered me taking nonsense, talking nonsense not because you cannot answer this is your prophet you just said everybody saw you you said that we kiss a stone only out of respect of love but your prophet he said that the stone have different job you liar the stone according to Muhammad is by touching it is going to forgive your sin is going to erase your sin there is two signs of the Kaaba if you touch them, the black stone and the Yemeni corner. If you touch them, they erase your sin. So you did lie to us when you say out of love. This is not out of love. This is out of ignorance. Right? And not only that, if we ask you right now, Mr. Truth Seeker, 
Is the black stone alive or dead? Do you Muslim believe the black stone is alive or dead? Any Muslim can tell me? Is the black stone is alive or dead? Any Muslim? Your, 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 uh, uh, Mr. Truth Seeker, he says the stone will be witness against, uh, against the people. You see, uh, Mr. Truth Seeker, you just get yourself busted because whatever Jesus said, it's metaphorical. As an example, Jesus said, believe in a stone and you will, re will, will be healed, which means faith is very powerful. But he never kisses stones and the stones will not witness. This is metaphorical. That everything you did is there. And nobody can be hiding from God. This is what the verses are talking about. But you avoid that your prophet claim, literally, that the black stone is going to have a tongue. And this tongue will speak, literally. And will have eyes, literally. Not metaphorically. So when a Muhammadan he tried to defend, always he failed. Because when you debate a Christian, you have to debate him in what he believe. Not what you think. When I debate you about Islam, I debate you about what you believe as a Muslim, what Islam teach. Do Islam teach that the black stone is going to have a tongue? Yes or no? Here we go. And only one stone will do that, not every stone. When the Bible speaks about those things, it's wherever you go, wherever you commit your crimes, everything there witness for your crime. Which means you cannot lie to God from it. But here what we see that you're a prophet claiming that this is a living stone because it's a God stone. Actually, there's a hadith says that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. The black stone, the black stone, doesn't matter who said that, Jacob or Jesus, everybody speak for Jesus. You know, at the end of the day, it's what it's meant. It's not what you think. Here we have a belief, believe that a stone can forgive sin and if you touch them. And those stones, they have going to have an eyes and tongues. Am I lying, Mr. Mr. Uh, Muhammadan? Am I lying or this is what you see in the front of your eyes? Not only that, your prophet, he claimed that the black stone was white as milk. And then the sin of mankind made it black, which means this stone get dirty by sin. It's a living stone. And this hand is the hand of Allah, which is in the shape of a private part. And if we go and uh, read the interpretation for this, uh, or let us say, uh, in the tafsir, the book of tafsir, we will find that the black stone became dirty because women, they used to put their hands over their private part when they have their period. And I challenge any Muslim to say I'm a liar. Call me, I will make you read it live on air. It's a challenge for any Muslim he says I'm lying. Call me, I will make you read it live on air from your Islamic website, from your own books. That the black stone, it was, was women getting, according to you, it was women touching their private part when they have their period. And then they place their hands inside the stone and this is what make it black. And those women, why they, why, why they think that this will make the stone black? Because simply those women, they believe the reason they are not able to carry a child, this is why they have their period, because they committed some sin against God. So they go to black stone, which is the God of fertility. And by doing that, this is why the black stone is in the shape of a private part of a woman. So who is the pagan? And not only that, the Arab, they witness. The Arab, not me, that the black stone was one of many stones, right? Don't change topic, potato. If we go here, we will find the following so we can love more. This is what the Arab used to practice, and this is what Muhammad practiced. Read carefully. 
And this is Sahih al Bukhari. They cannot say it's a lie. They cannot say it's weak. They cannot say it's fabricated. We used to worship stones. And when we found a better stone than the first one, we would throw the first one and take the later. But if we could not get a stone, then we would collect some earth, which means dirt, and then bring a sheep and milk the sheep over it and perform tawaf around. Do you see the word tawaf? This is what you practice. Tawaf is a practice of the pagan Arab around a stone, and this is what you do. So you carry on with the pagan belief of a, a holy stone, which is a stone sent by God because it's a stone coming from the space. Look different, look, look strange. Each time they get better stone, look better. They throw the first one and they replace it with the new one. Are we lying? Absolutely not. This is your books. This is your statement. And this is your translation. However, Umar al Khattab, he got Muhammad busted. You see, when Muhammad, he said that by touching the black stone is going to erase your sin. And when Muhammad, he said that the black stone is going to witness for you in the day of judgment, yet Umar al Khattab, who is a smart person compared to Muhammad, he said the following. He said the black stone is useless <laughs> anyone notice what Umar al-Khattabi did? guys anyone notice what Umar al-Khattabi did? Hey, we will read Joshua, we will read Joshua with, uh, with no problem but the truth seeker you are trying to change the topic because you are ashamed you are a pagan follower of a pagan cult and you are all what you are trying to divert our topic but we will answer you no problem guys look at this do you see what Omar he said? Omar, he said that this black stone is useless. Is what? Is useless. Our friend Abbas in the chat, he said, this is a gift from Allah. So who of you is lying? Is it Omar al-Khattab or you? Because Omar al-Khattab, he says it's useless. There's no benefit from you. There's no harm from you. Which means the gift of Allah is a fraud. Because God will not send the gift as useless. That will make him a useless God. Stupid God. And Mr. Truth who keep posting for us from Joshua. This is not about the black stone you idiot. This is about this stone where you commit your sin is going to witness against you. Which means everything around you and we answered that already anything you do anything you do against god is recorded anything you do even if it's bad or good it's recorded your sin is recorded so when a muslim he tried to find say okay christian believe in a stone which is stone can you tell me the stone where is the stone where where is the stone we go and kiss it and we say it's going to witness for us this is your fallacy my friend and this is your stupidity and always if you want to debate somebody, you debate him about his belief, not what you think about your belief. Here we are showing you the clear contradiction between the lies of Muhammad and what Umar al-Khattab is saying. Any Muhammadan want to say anything? Anyone? No answer. Muhammad here get busted by Omar. Omar say this stone is useless. Have no harm, have no use. Muhammad say this stone is going to witness for us, is going to have eyes and tongue. Which of them is lying? Omar or Muhammad?
uh, truth seeker, the, the 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 verse is there. This is a you see, people are laughing at you, my friend. I feel sorry for you. Jesus, when he grabbed a stone, it's a stone was there. It's not a stone. People go around it and do tawaf and they touch it, and nobody believe it's holy. So Jesus saying that you see this stone, you are more harder than a stone to listen and to believe. And this stone is going to witness against you. But Jesus did not say that he meant that literally. He is saying that you are harder than a stone. And he mentioned that in many places in the Bible, that your heart is more hard than a stone. You don't understand what I'm saying to you. This is why he said to them, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. So this is your fallacy, and we got you busted. Here we have your prophet saying this is a real stone, is going to witness, and it's one stone. Jesus is grabbing a stone, any stone. See, this stone will witness against you, which means you cannot deny in the day of judgment that I did not say what I said to you today. And you can go or read any interpretation. If you find one interpretation agree with you, then come back to me and let us laugh at me. But you cannot. But here, according to Muslims, this is literally will happen. The black stone is going to have eyes. The black stone is going to have tongue. And actually, I drew the black stone before with tongues and eyes many times. I can do it again. So the poor Muslim, he's trying to find a solution. How his God, he sent the gift, it's a black stone. How we have a Kaaba, we decorate the Kaaba. You say decorating a Christmas tree is a pagan practice. You decorate the Kaaba. The Kaaba is nothing but a stone. And you go around the Kaaba. We don't go around the Christmas tree. And we don't believe a Christmas tree is holy. And we don't worship a Christmas tree. And we showed you that this is not allowed in Jeremiah and Isaiah. It is you who do that. My friend, put it in the screen. Okay, we will put it in screen. And people will laugh at you. Here we go. We just explain it. Stupidity is amazing. And if you go next to the page, you will see the interpretation for it. All of this is interpretation and verses have connection with this. But none of them says that there's a stone is going to do that. This is your stupidity. Do you see how many verses connected to this verse? You will be judged for your sin, and you cannot hide what you did. So this is metaphorically, like her, look here. For the stone will cry out from the well, from the wall. Is that clearly what will happen? So either you are an idiot, or you are an idiot. We don't believe in stones. This is metaphorical. It's like when you kill somebody with a knife, he says, this is your knife, is going to witness for your crime. But here is different. Here we have eyes and tongues. We have a stone, if we touch it and we, we, we uh, 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 go around it, it's going to erase our sin, as you see. I feel sorry for the Muslims. You are 100% pagan. Now, let us go to something else. Not only the Kaaba is a pagan practice and the black stone is a black pagan practice, what about as Safa and Al Marwa? Let me show you how as Safa and Al Marwa look like. Give me a second. <clears throat> I'm just looking for uh...
the idol. And this is another thing Muhammad he copied from the pagan Arab around him. I saw this uh, I was before I'm trying to find it Yeah, I need to. Uh, I, I I saw before. This is real real idols for a male and female. Uh, I cannot find it. I will make a video just about it. Now, if we ask the Muslims. Let us see here. When you practice al Safa and al Marwa, what they will say? They will say al Safa al Marwa. This is a place where Abraham wife she was walk between. <laughs> With the Quran, I have different story, my friend. Yeah, I could not find the al Safa al Marwa for now. We have. We have a Muhammadan, let us see. Hello? Hello? I don't hear you, what? Hello? Hello, can you listen to me? I can't understand you. Are you there? I said I'm the one I caught from the chip. Why do you block me? Why do you run away? Well, I can't understand you, my friend. Your internet is bad. You are using the internet of the neighbor. So, what do you want to say to us? Make it clear, please. Hello? I mean, we wait for 10 hours to get a Muslim to call us, and when we get somebody, he have no internet. If we go in the Quran, we will find the following. Chapter 2, verse 158. As Safa and Al Marwa is from the symbols of Allah. Any Muslim can explain to us how those became from the symbols of Allah? Any Muhammadan can explain to us how this has become from the symbols of Allah? Is that a totally pagan practice? Or I'm lying? Any Muhammadan? What the story behind this? Is it true that the Muslim they reject to practice as Safa and Al Marwa because it's a pagan practice? Or I'm lying? <laughs> Is it true? Is it true that Muhammad he did that because the Ansar who did join Islam they are pagan and they like that and he didn't want to lose them so he said yeah it's from Allah teaching no problem practice it practice it 
While as Safa and Al Marwa is two idols for two person, one is a male and one is a female. And supposedly those male and female they had sex in the Kaaba. Any Muhammadan have something to say? Mayday, Mayday. What is a Safa and what is a Marwa? Who is the knowledgeable Muslim? He have an answer. So look at this cult. Believing stones, kissing stones. I remember once I, I, I went to a Muslim website and we chatted with them. I asked them, I have a question. And actually I posted the, the, the chat, I recorded. I said, why, uh, why the prophet, he kissed the black stone? The guy in the other side, it's, I think it's called convert to Islam something. He said, because the stone is holy. I said, why it's holy? He said, because the prophet kissed it. <laughs> have you ever heard of madness more than this? Why kiss the black stone? Because the stone is holy. And why the stone is holy? Because the prophet kiss it. Why the prophet kiss it? Because it's holy. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, what's wrong with this religion? Not only their prophet, he have, he's suffering from the flight of thoughts as usual. The followers, they are suffering from the flight of answers. Who is a Muslim when I tell me what is a Safa and al Marwa? And what is the reference where it's coming from? And why Allah he needs a Safa al Marwa? He have already the Kaaba. What is this a Safa and Marwa? What if you walk between those two little mount, what will happen exactly? Pagan. It's a Islam all of it, it's a pagan ritual. And look what the Quran says here. It's not a sin to go between them. Why they thought it's a sin? What make the Muslim think it's a sin? Because it's a pagan. And Muhammad, because he's a fraud, he is willing to compromise. All right. Compromise, prophet. Compromise. This is the only way to be a prophet. With the Jew, he's a Jew. With the Christian, he's a Christian. With the Hindu, he's a Hindu. With the Buddha, he's a Buddha. And with the people who worship as Safa and Al Marwa, he is a Safa and Al Marwa. And this is from the shrine of Allah. How? Nobody knows. This is the book of Asbab al Nuzul. Very famous book to give you. Asbab al Nuzul means the verses, the why the verses come down. Why they came down, supposedly, from Allah. All right? So, people used to go between as Safa, uh, uh, you know, and Al Marwa before Islam. When Islam came, they asked Allah Messenger to give him and give him peace about this. And Allah, the exalted, he revealed this verse. <laughs> and look, what does that mean? It's mean that Allah never said anything about as Safa Al Marwa until that day. Nothing. Allah is mute. People are practicing it, and Allah is mute. He will not say, "Don't do it, do it." No. Pagan are practice it. It's okay for Allah. He never said to Muhammad, "Don't do it." He never said to Muhammad, "This is pagan." He didn't say, "This is from me." Nothing until people they ask him. But how this happen? It's revealed about a group from the helper Al Ansar before Islam. They used to make Hajj to the mount which between the two female and the male, as Safa and Al Marwa. And they do that Hajj between them as a practice of their cult. Allah bless him and give him peace. They mentioned to him, the Prophet, supposedly, Allah pray on him and, and uh, uh, pray for him, sorry, not, uh, not to him. And uh, so Allah revealed the verse. But look what the story is. The story is, is saying here that the Muslim, they came to Muhammad. 
It says here, Anas ibn Malik, reported from Anas ibn Malik, we dislike going between the Safa and the Marwa because they were the shrines of Quraysh. This is the shrine of Quraysh in the pre-Islamic period. So we abandoned them in Islam. Okay, hold on. As long as Muhammad, he is a prophet. And the Muslims during his time, they abandoned this practice. Why Muhammad did not say to them why you abandoned it? You know what I mean? Do you see the fraud? The Muslims, they are not practicing this no more. And they stop practicing this. And Muhammad never say anything. So that Muhammad says to them, oh, no, don't, don't stop. Don't stop. Practice, practice, because it's from Allah. No, Muhammad said nothing. Until a group from Ansar one day, they start, you know, uh, 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 they, they come and they say, we want to practice it. Suddenly Muhammad, he said, this is from the shrine of Allah. So Muhammad himself was not sure. <laughs> do, you see the, do you see the stupidity? Allah revealed this verse, say to Umar al -Habash, ibn Habashi, uh, Habashi. I asked Ibn Umar about this verse and said, go to Ibn Abbas and ask him. The letter, the letter said, there was a Safa is an idol from for, in the form of a man called Esau like what and in the Marwa is an idol in the form of a woman called Naila and look look here people of the book claim that those are male and female they committed the daughter in the Kaaba what what the people of the book have to do with the Kaaba you see how how mixed the fiction here so what confirmed here that there's a man and a woman they had sex in the Kaaba, and those people, they made an idol for them in two mounts. And the Muslims now are going between those two mounts. And this is supposedly, I mean, why Allah, he need this ritual? What this is for? Explain to me, please, how I need to go between those two mounts, what this will do to me, what that will solve as a problem for me as a human. What is going to do to me if I go between two mounts of a man and a woman the man, you know, Esau, a man, his name is Esau, as you see here in the chat, in the text. And the woman, her name is Naila. So why we are going to go between them? What this will do to us? And if this is from the ritual of Allah, so who need the Kaaba? Why, why we have this? All of this is a pagan practice. And as you see, here they have confirming that there is idols who was there Naila and Esau any Muhammadan want to say anything Anyone? This is all from the Arabian mythology, fictions and lies. People believe in it. Muhammad, he copied it as usual. Just to make the Arab accept him because they like this. You cannot take it away from us. And as you see, Muhammad, he did this according to the request of Al-Ansar. I mean, why Allah did not say to him when the Muslims stopped doing this? You see, the Muslims saying clearly, we stop doing this. We don't practice this no more. Why Muhammad, God, did not send to Muhammad a verse says, don't stop doing this. This is from my ritual. So it's a clear conclusion and clear evidence that Muhammad is a person who compromised just for the sake of getting more believers. The same as a Muslim today who go in the mosque, like there's a guy, his name, what his name? I forgot his name. He claimed to be a doctor. He's like from Pakistan, something like this. He say, brother and sisters, he speak very like, very kind, like brother and sisters, Islam gave the women their rights. 
and Islam is the religion of peace and the Prophet he was ambassador of peace you're right right it's absolutely the women they have the right to be beaten by their husband and a man he can divorce the wife by one word and then all what she get is what they written in the contract which is 100 years ago I remember a woman which is the mother of a friend of mine I mean he was in school we are students he did not come to school for a few days so I was worried about him you know why this guy is not coming his name is uh, I think Muhammad Ali something like this so I asked him what's what happened man where are you? are you you were sick he said no my father he divorced my mother I said your mother his mother is really old you know he said yeah he divorced her we were like in high school he said okay what happened now what will happen he said the problem what they wrote in the contract that her dowry is it was valuable 30 years ago or 40 years ago now they will not even buy her a tv so look they wrote in the contract just to make it uh, like uh, simple to understand let us say you marry a woman today and you are a muslim you say to her your dowry if i divorce you i will pay you ten thousand dollars ten thousand dollars after 30 especially in the, in the in the middle east currency would have a great inflation will be equal to ten dollars and this is what happened to this woman. So she got nothing. She lost her house. She lost everything she have. And now she have no support except her children. This is the truth. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. There's a guy who's calling me loser. Let us put his text back, please. Uh, if you can put his text back, uh, Phil, <clears throat> the one who called himself Arco Tross Yoga Vega, whatever his name. What's your problem, Mr. Vega? Why you don't call me? Why you don't call me, Mr. Vega? What do you think? If you are a person who have knowledge, Give me a call. A Muslim Abdul, he is saying, Don't run away from me. Will we will receive your call. You did not even talk. Don't run away from me. You made me laugh, my friend. Uh, any Muslim would like to call us? Mayday, Mayday. Who is a Muslim? He have the courage and the knowledge to call us. All your worship is nothing but a ritual of the pagans, and we prove it very easy. Kissing black stone, believing black stones will talk. The black stone is the right hand of Allah. I mean, what is left? Right? What is left? This Muslim tried to call him back. You see what happened when you are out of customers? You call even the one who don't have internet. Okay, let us call this guy. Hmm, he's not online. Hmm, what we can say? Potato, tomato. From all the Muslims who have internet, we get the one who have no internet to call me. Any Muhammadan, he feels strong. He have knowledge. Anyone? Again, people, just to warn you, anyone, there's somebody who is posting an account in PayPal or whatever, saying donate to Christian Prince. Christian Prince, he don't ask people for, the, he don't, it takes people asking for donation. And the only place people, they can donate is, as you see, in the, in the screen. So 
If you have such a person, he texts you, report him immediately to PayPal and tell him this guy is doing a fraud. This is not a Christian prince. I have nothing to do with him. Don't leave the rest for them. And if, if you donated already, ask for your money back and report him and that will make him in trouble. They will send his, you know, his name, his details, his IP, whatever he is. He think he is, uh, he's, you know, he's out of, uh, no, they will get him because this money have to go somewhere. This money have to go to his bank account. So they can get him easy. So if somebody committing a fraud, trying to steal my identity, making you believe that he is collecting donation for Christian Prince, report him. This is the only place you can send donation. And I'm talking about it because people, they send me a text. Now, there is somebody said that someone is selling my book for free. Report him in the same page you are, you see, and give, send me, the, send me the, the, the information in Skype. I will report him to the FBI because this is a crime. And already I got one in trouble for doing that. I mean, look at those stupid people. Let us say you, you start selling my book for, you know, for your pocket. Okay, make a hundred dollar, one thousand. You will, you, will, you will get the money and you will go to jail for many years. Good for you. Now, we go back to our topic. Who is the Muhammadan is willing to call? Who is the Muhammadan is willing to call? Anyone? A Muslim saying a Christian worship the sun god, that is stupid of you because you just confirm that the Quran is a lie. Because if we worship the sun god, that means Allah, what he said is a lie in the Quran. Because the Quran says that the Christian worship Jesus. Do you see how we get them busted? Isn't it your Quran says that the Christian, they say that Jesus is Allah? One of you, he said, some people, they are making a video, I think they are uh, uh, Arab Muslims, uh, that Jesus is a Palestinian. Again, those who they are posting this video from the Mohammedan, they just prove that Allah is a liar. Because if Jesus is Palestinian, that means all the chapter of Al Umran is a fraud. Because this is Al Umran, who they are from the children of Israel, according to the Quran. So if you say that Jesus was Palestinian, you are spanking your God again. Thank you. Do you see how you can spank them easy? From their lies, from their lies, the, the lies they make is the oil to fry them with it. Isn't it your God who said that Jesus is born of Mary, the daughter of Amran, Al Amran, and they are from the children of Israel? So who is the stupid who, who come with this video saying that Jesus was a Palestinian? And by the way, what, what, where we can find the word Palestinian in the Quran? Why your God even don't remember that word? Right? <clears throat> Somebody, uh, his name is uh, Vega, is saying, was Jehovah a pagan god? Well, you have to prove it because pagan is about worshiping idols. As simple as that. You, need, you, you know, just, just to show you how some people are stupid. As an example, in Arabic, in Arabic today, there is many words used which was used by the pagan. For God and used for Allah as an example Allah or even before before Christianity before Christ came there's words which is taken from the Aramaic like as an example Al and Il those are words supposedly they present a God and that God at that time when the people speak about it it was a pagan God so if I use the word which is mean God for my God doesn't make my God the same pagan God of those people. That is your foolishness, my friend. As an example, right now in English, a Muslim, he say God, but this is not my God. A Hindu, he say God, but this is not my God. A Christian, he say God, this is my God. All of us, we are using one word in English, it's called God. 
but each one of us he meant someone else so your ignorance is beyond imagination all of us we are sharing human beings they are sharing a language we share a language when a Muslim he pray he end his prayer by saying I mean this is a this is a statement starting from the Christians from the Aramaic Christians but he is saying I believe this is what he meant by the way if you ask the Muslims what I mean mean they don't know Jesus is not born in a Christmas he was born during the season where sheep meet as it was silent <laughs> Islam Dawa, let me let me mute you because you are being an idiot now and it's not important when it, when when a Christ really it's not important the date exactly because that date would never be repeated however if if the Christmas and 25 of December is bothering you celebrate the Christmas according to the Eastern calendar which is going to be in January because this is just about difference in the calendar this is not about the date the Eastern Christians they have different calculation and actually me my believe believe that Eastern Christians they have a better calculation for dates as an example the Easter this is why every Easter according to the Eastern calendar a light comes from the empty tomb of Christ which is proving that this is truly that the, the the correct day because a miracle happened every Easter a light coming from the tomb of Jesus so this is just a calendar and the pagan is the one who believe in stones kisses stones believe the stones will forgive his sin erase his sin and go around the stones and bow in the front of the stones we don't do that That's your prophet. Any Muhammadan? Even the Kaaba is called a cube. I mean, how in the world this house of Allah is a cube? And let me show you when the Muslim they say that the house of Allah, the Kaaba is the house of Allah. I laugh. Why? Let me show you. In a second, you will laugh with me. In a second, I can prove that this has have nothing to do with God. In two seconds, look with me and try not to laugh. This is the house of Allah is flooded by the sewage. Have you ever heard of a God? He chose his Kaaba in a place where the sewage will cover it each time there is little rain. I mean, how simple the proof is what kind of God he put his house the only house he have in earth in a location which is the lowest point of Mecca where all the sewage will come and cover it when there's a rain and this is the house of Allah imagine you hire an engineer to choose a land for you to build your house and the stupid engineer he choose a place where is going to be flooded by the poo, poo How this is can be from God? Look at this guy, he's swimming. I don't know if you can see his head. They are swimming. This is the house of Allah. <laughs> And thanks to the American engineers, who they were able in most scenarios to stop the flood from coming to the Kaaba by the money of the oil. Allah could not stop it. The Americans stop it by their engineering. And actually, until now, sometime it happened. How this is can be from God? This is the house of God where God and the Muslim they say it's in the center of the earth. I mean, look how funny even their statement, center of the earth. How you can we have a center of the earth? Are you in the magma? To be in the center of the earth, either the earth is a flat, 
Or you are in the magma. So we do not need to be a genius to prove that the Kaaba is a fraud. It's a pagan practice, Muhammad. You know, if we ask the Muslims for how long Muhammad he stopped praying to the Kaaba, they will say to you many, many years. Why? Because he was trying to copy the Jews. He was praying toward Jerusalem. Why? Why Muhammad is praying toward Jerusalem? What he have there? The Temple of Suleiman. What he have to do with that? Because he was trying to be a Jew. He lived between the Jews. He kissed the shoes of the Jews. He was praising the Jews. He did, his, he did anything he can do. So to make the Jews believe that he's a prophet. When they could not, he could not make it. Muhammad, he said actually, if only, only 10 Jews believe in me, the Jews will believe. If only 10 Jews Believe on me. The rest of the Jews will believe. Which means Muhammad, he failed even to make 10 Jews believe in him. And this is in Sahih Bukhari. Peace upon him. May Allah pray for him, not to him. And look here, the Muslim, the translation, they say, among their chiefs, what chiefs? And the Hadith doesn't say that, you liar. If only 10 of the Jews, and this is between two brackets, it's a lie. It's additional in the translation. If only 10 of the Jews believe in me, the Jews will definitely have believed in me. Muhammad, he could not make 10 believe in him. So how does Islam grow and uh, by the sword? Umirtu an uqatil al nasa jamian. I've been ordered to fight and kill all mankind until they say there's no God but Allah and He's a prophet as Muhammad, and they slaughter as we slaughter, and they eat as we eat, and they pray as we pray, and then and only then their blood and their property is uh, protected from me. Because Muhammad is a gang thief. He will use religion to steal your money. What is excuse to steal your money? I mean, you did nothing wrong to me. So what I would do? Very simple. I would say you did not believe Islam, so I have the right to take your money and your property and your wives. Are we lying? No. All those are authentic hadith. And the Quran is witness for them. There is no protection for somebody who don't believe in Islam. He will be killed and his money will be taken and his children will be enslaved. And not only you have to say Shahada, you have to pray as we pray. You have to face the pagan Qibla, which is the Kaaba. You have to slaughter as we slaughter. And then and only then their blood and their property is sacred to us. Do you see it? Muhammad is a thief. He is using... He is using religion as a reason to steal your money. And look at this. Our Skype is open. No Mimi, no Lily, no Samsi. Nobody want to call us. No Susu, no Fufu. This is, you see, this is a real challenge. Not like Mimi Hijab, he want to change the Christian prince, but yet he don't dare to call him. You don't dare to let him talk. Cowards. This is a really challenge. Where is Mimi Hijab to call me right now? He's a potato. I don't think he's a potato. Potato tastes good. Any Mohammedan? Any Muhammadan who wanna say something to us? No. 
Mayday, Mayday. Who is a Muslim? We are waiting for a Muslim who have knowledge and courage. Somebody saying in uh, in the book of Exodus, uh, why if you if if this is this place will be like the the place where they give the sacrifice became holy. You see. The holiness in the Bible is about you designating a place you designate. It is you designate a place and an act for God. So that act is a holy act. So if you designate a place, you, let us say in my house, I designate a room just for God. A place to of worship and this is before Christianity for the Jews they sacrifice and this place where I present my sacrifice and by the way if you remember when Jesus was you know was uh, uh, was working in Sabbath the Jews they said to him isn't it forbidden to do work in Sabbath he said well isn't it David who was eating the bread in Sabbath where from where from the center fireplace it's a bread So any gift you give to God in the Old Testament, any place you designate to God, it's a holy place. It's not a, it's about specific stone. It's not about worshiping a stone. So this is your fiction and this is your lie. And this is why the Bible says every day is Sabbath if it's a day for God. Any day, it doesn't matter what day. And the same here. But remember, Jesus said, remember that, speaking to the Jews, he said to them, Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath. And here is the same. Even Jesus himself is sacrificing himself, it was for the man. Not the opposite. So when you are trying to debate Christianity, Either you are a person who copy paste with your ignorance or you go study and see what the Christians believe. Because when you debate a Christian, you debate them about their belief, not about what you think. Otherwise, that will make a fool out of you. And people will laugh at you. So you designate a sacrifice and you sanctify yourself by being holy. You don't do bad act. You don't do any garbage stuff. You stay away from sin and that place is designated for God so because it is for God that that place is a holy place however the word holy here is relative it's a relative word I don't know how to say in English which means you know I'm not really going to be really holy I will never be holy right because the Bible says that every human being is a sinner all commit sin. So what holy mean? Here it says that in your in, in, in your in your situation right now, as a decent man praying for God, asking for forgiveness, and presenting yourself in the house of God, that will make you a holy person in the eye of God, but still you are a sinner. Holy in the mean that you are working hard to be holy. This is why the Bible says, Be holy like your father. And by the way, somebody he said here the question. Let us show you this question here. <clears throat> Why Muhammad he chose uh, Friday? You see, the Muslim they say to you that Sunday, Sunday is a pagan day. They say to you, it's called Sunday. Hello, like the day of the sun. This is what they say, right? 
According to Muhammad, just to get them busted, the one who chose Sunday for the Christians is Allah. Any Muslim want to call me and prove me wrong? Allah, he chose Saturday for the Jews, Friday for the Muslims, Sunday for the Christians. And it is Allah who deceived the Christians from Friday. Do you believe it? Any Muhammadan? My Skype is open. Nobody will call. So if the Christians are people following the day of Sunday, because that will make them pagan, according to you Muslims, that's mean Allah is the pagan God. And let us show you some hadith so the Muslim will not say, where this guy is getting this from? <laughs> oh boy who won this hadith this is a disaster who won this hadith? Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet, said that the Messenger of Allah used to fast more often on Saturday and Sunday. Do you see it, guys? Do you see it? What days Muhammad used to fast? I don't hear it. What days? Saturday and Sunday. Why? Why Muhammad is fasting in Saturday and Sunday? This is why they don't dare to debate me. What he will do? He will say the Sunday is a Sunday, the day they worship the sun, and you Christians, you Christians are uh, pagan. Muhammad is fasting on Sunday and on Saturday. And never in Saturday and in Friday. Do you see Friday there? Not only that, the hadith says, he said that the other days are the days of the Mushrikeen, which means Friday is the day of the Mushrikeen. Do you see it? Guys, do you see it? He fast on Saturday and Sunday. Then on other days he would he would say they are the aids which means the holiday of the pagans. Do you see it? So according to your prophet, Friday is a pagan day. How many of you would like this hadith to be shared? And how many of you will save it? Let us say this is my gift for you for Christmas. Zoom out, or oh, not clear? Okay, is it better now? Actually, if I zoom out, you will lose the text. Why zoom out? Why I need to zoom out? Doesn't make sense. Let me see how it's coming in YouTube from your side. Uh, I see from the other side is not coming right. Okay, I see. Do you see how we can get? And now the Muslim, they will say to you, oh, this is weak. No, it doesn't say weak. And even if you say weak, it's a proven that Muhammad at that time, obviously, he agreed that this is the correct days to fast and to pray to God. 
as I said, Muhammad at that time, he was trying to be a Christian, trying to be a Jew. When the Christians and the Jews rejected him, he found himself lonely. The lonely prophet. Any Mohammedan? Speechless? <laughs> Speechless. What a crazy cult. Who's next? This is why, my friend, they don't dare to debate me. This is why they mute him, hang up on him. When the Muslim they debate me, they make a video by their own, and then they win the debate. I mean, as long as Christian Prince is not there, we win. But can you debate me? You cannot. Why you don't call ultimate truth? But this guy, he don't even want to talk. This guy, he don't want me to talk. This guy, he want to talk only himself. And by the way, you ask me for ultimate truth. This guy, he believed that, uh, what his name? I mean, go and watch how many videos, and we give him many chance. This guy is a stupid. He don't believe in the Quran you have in your hand. He believe in the Quran of uh, Khalifa. <laughs> Go, I mean, this guy, he made tons of stupid things. Go watch his videos. We gave him as a chance. He's an idiot like you. Well, no, he's a kid and he is not a Muslim. Because a Muslim who believe that the Quran is a corrupt, he cannot be a Muslim. And this guy, he believe in Khalifa, Rashad Khalifa, Quran. And the video is there. And there's tons of videos of him calling me. I did not hang up on him after, you know, I, I, I took many, many calls from him. And the videos are there. Go watch and laugh. By the way, why he don't post those, post those videos, all of them, in his channel so we can laugh? And why you don't call? Okay, get, get me a shake. This guy, he cannot even read his prophet name correctly. And the second he called me, he will not let me talk. Do you know why they, they go in this uh, uh, fluid of talk? Because they are afraid. If we let him talk, we have a problem. So we will ask you a question and then we will not let you answer it. Because if you answer it, you get me busted. And you know what? Here we go. My Skype is open. If you promise to let me talk, is more than welcome to call me. Is that fair, guys? I will not hang up on you. If you give me time. I mean, this is my program. Imagine my program. And I am the one saying, please, can you let me talk? <laughs> you can call me. And the excuse of being blocked, by the way, it's a stupid excuse because you can make a new account in Skype in two seconds. And call me again or what I'm asking if you call me to debate me please call me to debate me not to mute me not to shout and not to let me talk it's a it's a two people talking and don't be stupid silly don't say some things like this guy he said once I think he said that Jesus says drink my piss I don't know if it's him or someone else I think it's him I said where he said that he said, Jesus, he said, the one who drink my water will never go thirsty. I mean, why I want to talk even to those, this kind of people? So get me, a, at least get me somebody he respect himself. Do we have any brave Mohammedan who would like to call us? Please.
the reference for the hate my friend here we go this is the link just open the link and save it the admin he was posting the link for you if you are following up with the people maybe you have a long uh, you have a delay in the internet i understand some people they have a, a slow internet so things arrive to them slow this is the link for it save it put it in your browser and trust me the most time they say to you we don't believe in it because it's embarrassing yeah last time this filthy guy he called me he said that jesus he had sex with mary i mean why you want me to talk to such a filthy guy yeah you know get me get me someone he have self-respect at least Khadija, just go, just go. You and him. He's your boyfriend. You know what? I will shave my 20 foot beard if this is not you. Ultimate fort. You changed your name and you became Khadija. So yesterday you were a man, today you are a female. This is, by, by the way, this is him. Those kind of people, nobody remember them. They are desperate to be, like, we want to be known. So he want to talk to me. He's desperate. But he will not let me talk. So they come back in a name like Khadija. His name, his name Khadija now. I bet you that this is him, Khadija. He became a woman now. Because nobody speak about them except themselves. They want to be famous. Uh, you know, I did call Christian Prince. Do you know that? Really? Okay. And what happened? I did fart. What? I did fart in the microphone. Oh, okay. Like there's a there's a guy his name is Nunu uh, Nunu Ahmed Ahmed Nadir whatever you know this guy he he challenged to debate me this guy is an idiot you don't even know how to say two words together you don't even have high school with my respect to everybody we want somebody he know his religion right Any Abdul? Now, guys, just take a note. In the 24th of uh, December, in the evening of 24th, uh, we are going to be live in the other account, Quality of Life, to celebrate Christmas. And all Christians are welcome to call me. All right, I understand that many of you would like to call me during my, you know, but we don't want to do what the Muslims do, like two Muslims talking and blah, 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 and they win the debate. This is why here I am a challenge. I'm a big challenge for them. I have my Skype open. I challenge their scholars, not a kid, to call me. And you will see all those who they are supposedly sheikhs, whenever hang up on them, go and watch the videos in, in, in the channel. We don't hang up on them. We don't mute them. But if you are a filthy mouth and you need me, you are, you are saying that, so I, I will hang up on you. So in the 24th of, of December, which is in a few days from now, we will be in the quality of life M27, as you see in the screen. Subscribe to that channel and join us there. And we will take calls from Christians and we will spend some good time together. I think we will spend maybe a few hours together. Because a Christmas for me is every day. But it doesn't matter what day Christ he came to this earth. That is my day. And your day. Even the atheists, they use the date of Christ. They like it, they don't. It's 2019 after Christ. You like it, you love it, you hate it, it doesn't matter. You are, you are celebrating your life, your death, your birthday, by the date of Christ. And for us, this is an honor. Every day we designate for the Lord is a day of the Lord. So, December, and remember, December is not about the Christmas tree. December about being loving and giving, 
So those people who you love them, those people who you care for them, and those people who they are the needy, the poor, you know, you help people, you love people, you 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 are being a good person to everybody. And this is why Islam fear Christianity. While the Imam they are teaching hate in their mosque, Christians they are praying for the whole world, including the Muslims. And yes, me myself in a Christmas day, I will pray for the Muslims. I will pray for their health. I will pray that they will live good. They will be safe. I pray that they will not be deceived. I will pray that they will not be killing each other. I mean, enough is enough. Stop. Not a single day in this earth goes without hearing the news about somebody slaughtering somebody in the name of Allah. This monster Allah is a blood sucker. He cannot enjoy his existence without blood. For us as a Christians, we enjoy the Lord by love, not by hating the Muslims. We will never hate the Muslims. And I understand that some of us and many of us, we have a lot of angers of what Muslims do. But my friend, don't fail into the trap of, of, of hate. Because the second you start hating them, you became following Allah. Because Allah is not about one religion. It doesn't matter what the religion name is. Anyone who adopt hate, Allah is there for you and he is happy. Look what the Quran says. Who is saying? Allah, not me, not the Christian prince. <clears throat> Allah, he enjoy one thing. He enjoy torture. قَاتِلُوهُمْ يُعَذِّبُهُمُ اللَّهُ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ I cannot see no more. Let me turn the light. <clears throat> Read carefully. Kill them. Kill them. Allah will punish them by your hands. And look at the translation here, by the way. It says, and disgrace them. It doesn't say disgrace them. It's then torture them. Torture, and that will hear your breast. How much hate is inside? Torture, change the translator. Torture them by your hands. Allah, He cannot torture us, He's a coward, He's a potato, He does not exist. This is Muhammad. So Muhammad is encouraging people, saying to them that nothing will take your rage from your chest unless you kill those people. So while Jesus is saying, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they are doing. Muhammad was saying, kill them, torture them. How we can torture? Chapter 9, verse number 13, 14, 15. And by the way, the Muslim, they say to you <clears throat> that uh, Islam is not fighting those who they don't fight Islam. If you read from the beginning, you will see the following. Yet if they repent and perform the prayer and pay uh, the, the zakat, then they are your brother in the religion. And if they don't pay, kill them. So what the problem? If they are not, you see, because the Muslim, they say, well, it doesn't say in the verse before it, but if they break their oath after their covenant and trust at your religion, what does that mean? They will say to you, this is the pagans. They promised the prophet they will not attack. This is a lie. A lie. Those are Muslims. Read carefully. They made a covenant to be Muslims. If they repent, and perform a prayer and pay the zakat then they are your brothers in religion 
So what was the problem? It's not them fighting Muhammad. It is them rejecting Muhammad. So if they pray and if they pay, they are your brothers. But if they break their oath, what oath? They took shahada and they're confident in your religion. Then kill them. They are the leaders of the unbelief, the kuffar. The al kufr. Don't you fight people who uh, broke their oath and they want to expel the prophet from his... Uh, uh, they want to expel him the muslim they will say it says expel you see they will expel him it say it doesn't say they did it says ala tuqatiluna qawman nakathu imana aymanahum wa hammu and they like uh, let us say they want they want but they did not do that they want to proposed they proposed <laughs> And they say to you, there is no uh, uh, verses for apostate in the Quran. Those are the verses for apostate in the Quran. It's, it's in front of you. As simple as that. Last Midi for the Muhammadan. Any Muslim would like to call us, my friend? Okay, we'll sign out of Skype then. No problem. So guys, how many of you would like to join us in December 21st, 20, sorry, 24th of December? If you like to join us in the Christmas Eve, we will be in the Quality of Life M27. Everybody is welcome. I will take calls from Christians and this time only from Christians. You see here now, we take only from Muslims because we want to debate Muslims. And the reason some you know sometimes people they say why you don't take calls from us because it's very simple my friend i am here to train the christians about how to refute this cult so if two christians speak and agree about with whatever we say each other i mean what the point there's no there's no experience you learn there's no answer will be given and it's just a dialogue between two believing the same thing Right? And there's no point of this. We want to do something for the benefit of everybody. There's many Christians, they just take a Christian cause. You know, I don't do that. Muslims, they do the same. Mimi speaking with Lily. And Mimi says, do you know what the Christian prince, he said, Lily, he says, I, and I agree with you, brother. We don't want to do that. That is hilarious. If you go and see right now how many Abdul making videos, talking to themselves and refuting me by talking to themselves. Endless. All of them, they want to get a Christian prince busted. Christian prince exposed, teaching Christian prince Arabic. Why you don't call him and teach him Arabic? Teach him. Let everybody laugh. Yeah, we will be here in the 24th of December and we will stay here for many hours and uh, I will be happy to receive calls from whoever want to call me. Only Christians. If a Muslim call, I have to hang up on him because we don't want to debate there. We want to celebrate just, you know, the day of the Lord. All right? Nothing more, nothing less. We are giving all the days for the Muslims all the time. It is time to give the Christians a day. All right. So I want to say thank you for being here, everyone. And I pray to the Lord to keep you all in good wealth and good health. And I really i am very thankful for those who support what I do in every way, every mean. Some they post my videos, some they add subtitles. Some, you know, like in Indonesian, other languages, some they make donations. All of you are wonderful. All of you are wonderful. And I'm really proud of you. 
And the more support I get, the more I feel I have a bigger and bigger family. The family is getting bigger and bigger. We are here at the end of the earth in the biggest Islamic country, Indonesia. And we pray that the biggest Islamic country, Indonesia, is going to turn to Christ so fast. Especially now, by your help, my videos are translated and Muslims have no answers. There are scholars who they call, call themselves scholars. They are nothing but a fraud. They have no idea what they are believing in. They have no idea what Islam. And if you ask them, any one of them, who is Allah, he will give you an answer, which is funny, the creator. But the Quran says Allah is the best of the creators. And I did not ask you what he created. I'm asking you who is Allah. They don't know. What Allah means, they don't know. What Isa mean they don't know. What Sulaiman mean they don't know. What Mikael mean they do not know. What Jibrail mean they don't know. They know nothing. For this is after market cult. Everything they have is a theft. It is a religion called I don't know. Allah knows best. But what they know? They didn't know. And this is why they are afraid to call me. Do you remember, guys? I don't know if any of you have the video. Maybe we can play some of it before we go. If you remember, the guy, his name is Qasim. He got me his scholar who teach him in the mosque. He said, why you don't call, uh, debate my scholar? I said, sure. Actually, I am the one he said to him. Why you don't ask your scholar to call me? And he called me. So, I, uh, uh, the more question I ask him, the more he say, my brother, you have many questions. Uh, 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 I uh, think you have many questions, and uh, but he, he answered nothing. Go watch it and, and die laughing. Each time I say something to him, he will not answer it. And this is the scholar. And actually, by the way, those who they are scholars are the last one to answer. Because it's not like someone like Mimi Hijab, he say whatever he want and he can, nobody care. Like, your God, Allah, have body part. Who said so? You know? I mean, because he's just a kid. People will let it go. But a scholar, when he says something, people will take him accountable for what he's saying. So he has to be careful. So it's a lot easier to debate somebody who have a PhD in Islam, not an idiot who don't have high school in Islam. None of those who you see them making videos on YouTube, they have any knowledge, any degree in Islam. I mean, how you, how you became a qualified? You see, I don't say I'm a scholar in the Bible. I don't say that. I'm not. Because in order to be a scholar in the Bible, I have to study the languages first. I have to speak Aramaic. I have to learn how to read Hebrew. I have uh, to have a degrees in the Bible. Yes, I study, but I don't have degrees. And I cannot claim to be a scholar. But this is in the Bible. Yeah, Sheikh Abdul Wadud. Yeah, Sheikh Abdul Wadud. My friend, Islam is not conquering the world. It's the one who, the one, if if Islam can conquer the world, is by the help of the of of the atheist and the Christians, because there is many Christians, by the way, who they are a fraud. They speak good about Islam in the front. Of their churches those be aware from them if there is a church saying such a thing leave the church immediately and warn everybody not to go there because obviously the priest of this priest is a priest of the devil he is not serving Jesus the Bible is so clear it says that who is the who is the Antichrist is the one who denied the father and the son as simple as that do we agree I mean if I'm a Christian, I have to agree with the Bible. Otherwise, what? why I'm calling myself a Christian? So how somebody, he claimed to be a Christian, and he is a priest in a church, and then he speak Islam as coming from Abraham, and they worship the same God. That's false. Not only that. Jesus, he spoke to the Jews. And he said to them, if you are of your father Abraham, you do what Abraham does. 
which means Jesus, he denied him even to belong to Abraham, even if they are Jews. Because you belong to Abraham if you do what Abraham does. Do the Muslim do what Abraham do? Do the Muslim do what Jesus do? No. Who is the Antichrist? Is the one who denied the Father and the Son. And Muhammad, he denied the Father and the Son. So anyone he speak any other than the scriptures, as the Bible says, he is a fraud. And we should always expose that person. And me, Christian Prince, if I ever say to you, Islam is a good religion, that is the moment you know that a Christian Prince is a corrupt person and you should not listen to him ever again. Right? Be careful, my friend. So I want to say thank you. May the Lord bless you. It's time for me to go before I lose my voice. And I hope and I pray that today was a good day to learn. And days is coming is better and better. And we are going to use the gift of God, which he gave us, education, intelligence, and being a human. It's a gift from God. For the benefit of mankind. And not to be selfish. May the Lord bless you all. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon again. Bye bye.